When we reported on Venezuela two weeks back, we focused on how the domestic media were covering the economic and political crisis there. However, when a relatively obscure opposition figure, Juan Guaido, declared himself interim president, he was quickly backed by the U.S. and many other governments, including right-wing leaders in neighboring Brazil and Colombia, with media outlets there following suit. The U.S. news media covered the push to remove President Nicolas Maduro without saying what that attempt, if successful, would amount to, which is a coup. Instead, the focus has been on the legitimacy of last year's election, which is a relevant point, and it focused on the dire economic situation. But it mostly stayed away from the role that successive American administrations, through economic sanctions, have played in handicapping the Venezuelan economy. As Iraqis, Iranians, Libyans, and others will tell you, this is not the first time that the U.S. has taken a disproportionate interest in the governance of a country loaded with oil. Washington has a playbook for this kind of thing, and so apparently do the U.S. news media. Our starting point this week is Caracas. Two swearing-in ceremonies, two weeks apart in Caracas, both of which left much to be desired. January 10th, Nicolas Maduro sworn in for a second term as president after an election last year that the UN, the EU, and the US all said failed to meet accepted standards. January 23rd, Juan Guaido, the head of the National Assembly, swears himself in as president, an office he's never run for, and the US and many other countries quickly announce he's their man one hand raised to the heavens. He proclaims himself as president, having no electoral mandate, you know, having no real legi constitutional legitimacy to do so, before almighty God and the cameras. That's how you do it nowadays. 80% of Venezuelans have no idea who's the, who this man is, um, but he is very well known in DC. We know that not only did Mike Pence call Juan Guaido, um, the day before he declared himself president, but in fact the U.S. government has been working with um, the opposition in Venezuela for decades. So the situation is dramatic, and uh, I think the simplification of that situation into goodies and baddies, cowboys and, 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 and Indians is, is detrimental for our understanding of the situation in that part of the world. Juan Guaido was partly educated in the U.S. He's a protege of opposition figure Leopoldo Lopez, who the Maduro government has under house arrest. He was first elected to the National Assembly in 2010. However, he only became head of that body early last month. Guaido argues that his claim to the presidency is legally sound, since the Constitution allows for the head of the National Assembly to do that if the Assembly deems the office of the president to be vacant. However, Maduro supporters argue that Guaido's move and Washington's role in backing it are tantamount to a coup, which is a side of this story that doesn't get much play in the U.S. news media. But it's basically a failed state, so I think at this point they're hoping, that they really don't have anything to lose by endorsing Guaido. This clearly uh, represents a coup in my opinion. Just recently John Bolton has been photographed with uh, a document that said 5,000 troops to Colombia, and so therefore we can see that the American actions are building up a possibly military intervention. And yet, what we see from the media is they refuse to use the word coup. And the reason for this is that the United States media always follows the pronouncements and projections of the US government. However, coup does also, also means um, illegal seizure of power. Now, in Venezuela, what we have is a country and a government where the rule of law no longer applies, where the, the government itself has violated uh, laws repeatedly, um, which has lost legitimacy. And when there is no rule of law, then who is to decide what is and is not a lawful uh, removal of, of, a, of a sitting government? What a lot of media have been doing is to only use the term coup by quoting Nicolas Maduro. He obviously, he sees it as an attempted coup. And it's completely right that it should be reported that that is his view. To uh, call a spade a spade and an attempted coup an attempted coup is not to defend uh, the, Maduro, the Maduro administration. Certainly there is no denying the severity of uh, the problems in Venezuela and the uh, huge responsibility that the Chavez and Maduro administrations have in, uh, for instance, uh, the humanitarian crisis. There is no denying that. 
There is also no denying that what we are seeing here is a mainly US engineered attempt at a coup. Selling a humanitarian intervention in Venezuela would be easier for the Trump administration if not for the US's long track record of engineering the overthrow of leftist governments in Latin America. There was 1954 and Guatemala, 1964, Brazil, Chile and Argentina in the 1970s, the list goes on. The New York Times has its own track record of finding reasons to support those coups. It recently published this piece on Venezuela, blaming the state of the economy on the Maduro government's mismanagement and corruption. Other factors, the steep drop in the price of oil, the economic sanctions placed on Caracas by the Obama administration since widened under President Trump go completely unmentioned. Although destabilizing economies through sanctions and other means before intervening or invading has been an American tactic from Chile in 1973 right through to the Iraq invasion in 2003. Sanctions are an act of war and they hurt the most poor and vulnerable sectors of the population. You can look at Iraq in the late 90s. Sanctions were genocidal. They actually took the lives of 500,000 babies in Iraq. And that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. The media didn't really report on that. So it's not too surprising that the U.S. media is completely covering up the fact that there are U.S.-led sanctions on Venezuela that just under Trump alone has cost the Venezuelan economy $6 billion. The sanctions probably ag aggravated the situation in Venezuela, but it's time that in Latin America we also assume responsibility to saying some of this stuff is our fault. It's time also to recognize that a huge part of the economy was mismanaged. And the international community have been offering Maduro humanitarian aid, and he repeatedly and systematically has denied that. There are certain ominous echoes um, with 2003 in that now we have a very hawkish administration in Washington uh, that is talking of intervening, and we have large sections of the U.S. media in effect uh, acting as cheerleaders. And it is far more important to shut down the Maduro government than our government. And I think Donald Trump is leading there. That's going to happen. That's going to bring us together. But it's too easy to think, oh, here we go again. You can only hope that uh, peaceful change comes in some sort of negotiated settlement, which would pave the way to free and fair elections. Nicolas Maduro is trying to go around the mainstream media taking his message online, in this case, directly to the American people. However, Maduro's got problems much closer to home. This past week, this headline, How the U.S. Can Drown Maduro's Economy, appeared in one of Colombia's biggest papers, El Tiempo. The hostility Maduro is now attracting in regional news outlets is a reflection of the rise of the political right in Latin America. It also has to do with self-interest, the millions of migrants Venezuela is now producing, spilling across borders. The media in South America has uh, shifted decisively against the, the Venezuelan government. They have seen the, the, the disaster that's unfolding in Venezuela, wave upon wave of Venezuelan migrants. So the media on these countries are partly reflecting that. In Brazil and other countries where you now have right-wing, in some cases far right-wing governments, that the media also has a vested interest in reflecting the ideological viewpoint of the, of the sitting governments. None of which reflects well on the news outlets involved or bodes well for Nicolas Maduro. There are shortages of food and medicine, the essential elements of journalism, Accuracy, objectivity, context have also grown scarce. There's a surplus of discontent on the streets, one too many politicians calling himself president, and too much oil under the ground to go unnoticed in Washington. So much at stake. So many political actors with an interest, and so much at issue in the coverage.